What's happening everybody? <clears throat> Doug Lane here, Fast Lane Car Care. Got this, uh, I believe it's a 2007 Saturn Aurora. Want to take a quick minute to show you guys something that can happen. I've heard about it happening, uh, you know, several times, uh, especially on Teslas, surprisingly. Um, but I've never experienced this in real life. You can probably already tell what I'm gonna talk about. It's this finger right here. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't care about these fingers. So here's all these pieces of defroster tab, like all this defroster stuff. I noticed as soon as I started uh, wiping it down, uh, the defroster is really brittle and starting to remove that outer layer. Um, you know, it is what it is. So I got this, got these little bits all through my tent job. Now if there's just one little speck, you can pull it down, take a little piece of tape and fish them out of there. But this whole thing, you're, you're not gonna save that. You're gonna introduce way more trash contamination in it. Uh, from dust and stuff like that from having it down and picking it all out So what I opted to do was just go ahead and slap that piece of film on squeegee it out pretty decent And uh, let it sit So, you know again, we got all these little defroster tabs So the whole idea is let this tack up a little bit. I went ahead. I went ahead and cut my roll-ups I got my excess pieces that should cover my quarters uh, and this should be this should be dry enough that it's gonna pull some stuff off, but not, yeah, perfect. It shouldn't be wet enough, or I mean dry enough, that it's going to leave a bunch of glue. So that's our whole goal here, is just to pull off any remaining defrosters that might be loose. Um, I'm gonna be a thousand percent honest, I don't know if this defroster is gonna work anymore, and honestly, I don't know if the defroster worked to begin with. So this is something that you can run into on your older vehicles uh, that you may want to explain to your customers, especially like if this is a removal, I would definitely explain this to them. Um, but you know, like I said, this is the first time this has ever happened uh, on an install. I've never seen a defroster this old and crappy, but it is what it is. Like, look at that. You can see she pulled them all off uh, for the most part. So. You know, what am I gonna do to move forward? I wanna flip this up here and show you guys a little bit better. It's not gonna work. Probably cause the AC's on trying to blow it around. Uh, we'll just lay it right here like this for now. Um, but yeah, you can see all this defroster. You know, you, I mean, you're not gonna pick that out of there. They're too thin, too small. Uh, you could tape it, like I said, take a piece of house wrap tape or whatever and, and tape them. Uh, if it was just a couple specs here or there, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's gonna be a bad deal. So moving forward, what we have to do, obviously we have to cut a new pattern. We gotta shrink a new pattern. Uh, and then we gotta prep the window again. So what I'm gonna do, hopefully you guys can see that. Um, if I had a peel board, if I had a peel board, that'd be pretty slick. I'd just slap it on there and trace me out a new pattern and be close enough. We got plenty of border on this, on everything except for the bottom. So, out comes the Go Doctor, and we're gonna do a little bit of, uh, a little bit more prep this time. Um, so what I did, is I did my typical uh, scrubby, blue scrubby, or I mean uh, steel wool, blue scrubby, and you know, did this. And that's when I started noticing little little flakes. Um, it is what it is, man. It happens on older stuff. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna scrub the, just scrub the crap out of this window, man. And then I got the Go Doctor because it's kind of a hard plastic. And in my experience, it works really well at taking off like old, uh, old window tint glue and old 
like flakes of, of tint that get left behind the little purple bits, you know. Uh, it works really well for that in my experience. So I wanna go ahead and just kinda, you know, prep this like I would. And we'll go ahead and take our towel, microfiber here, get this moisture, see if we can't get anything else that might be left behind. We're not trying to be super precise here. Um, go ahead and try to get anything off these edges. I'm gonna take this, flip it over. Look, look you can see that on my, you see it on this uh, white towel we got laying on the back glass. I got little pieces on my bulldozer. So I'm gonna try to get behind this brake light pretty decent. I know there's no defrosters down there, but I don't want any junk to get stuck behind there and end up messing up my film, so messing up my tent. So now this is where we're gonna take the Go Doctor and just try to push along here. Oh, yeah, you can hear it grinding. And here there's some, uh, some, some defrosters that are there and some defrosters that are not. So again, like I said, I don't know if it's gonna work. I'm gonna test it. Uh, I'll get the infrared heat gun and turn it on. When I'm all done, let it run for a minute. Uh, some people might say, well, why don't you, you know, call the customer or ask the customer for permission or, you know, see what they want to do. Um, here's the thing. It's an old car. And like I said, the second I touched it with anything, it doesn't have to be a steel wool pad. Uh, even just regular glass cleaner and a towel would have broke this defroster. So, you know, they bought this car used recently. There's a good chance that this defroster was already broke. You know, whoever sold it probably had the windows cleaned. Uh, so the way most of these defrosters work, if you if you remove one segment, you know, it could affect a whole uh, area depending on how the grid's laid out and all that stuff. It could affect and mess up a whole area. So, you know, this defroster may never, or not never, but may not have worked since they bought the car anyway. Um, so that's the main reason why, you know, I didn't, didn't call and see what they want to do or anything. Uh, the only way to really fix that would have been to put a new back glass in it. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know what a back glass for this cost, probably at least four or 500 bucks, being that it's got a defroster and stuff and it's an older car, so they're probably, you know, not something that they make every day. Um, that would be my guess. I'm not a glass guy. I just or <laughs> I just have <laughs> have good relationship with a couple of them. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, like I said, I, I usually explain there's no uh, guarantee on the defrosters when you remove tint for that very reason. But like I said, on installation, I never had that happen. So keep rambling on. I'm going to get a new new section out here, a uh, new piece of film, get this cut, shrank, all that good stuff. And then, like I said, when we get it all done, we will go ahead and test it with an infrared heat gun, see if the glass gets warm. Uh, there's a, I mean, there's a good chance that it's not gonna work as effectively, but I mean, there is still some copper left, so I don't know. But another thing to note on these, pretty slick, you can remove the gaskets. They literally just roll the window down a little bit, pull it out, easy peasy. Front ones come all the way out. These back ones come all the way out too, but I don't need to remove this back here. So I just pulled out what I wanted to, tucked it in. And I'll just get it out of the way like that when it comes time to install. Uh, overall, easy car to do. I, I would have been basically done with it by now uh, had this not happened. But that's Tinny, man. That's life. Um, if you want to, you know, you want to play this game, you want to tent for a living. This is the kind of the stuff you're gonna have to have to get yourself into. Uh, just another thing to be aware of. You know, crazy thing is, I did a, I did the same model year car. Uh, over the weekend, not this particular car, but something that's of a similar age, no issues with the defrosters. It really just depends on the specific vehicle. So that's all I got, guys. I'll bring you back here in a little bit. All right, guys, bring back here, let you see. We don't have any specks in there. We got a couple little bits of dust on the outside of the glass. It's a little, uh, you know, nicks or whatever, but uh, other than that, it's all good. So my strategy paid off. 
Uh, just let that film stay on there, take off the rest of the defrosters that were falling off. I did fire it up, uh, put the defrosters on, and put my hand on it. Uh, I think the grid's completely ruined. I mean, you can see there's some sections that are completely missing. Uh, I mean, it is what it is. Really no other way, especially on a car like this. It's this old, other than, like I said, put in new glass, which kind of really doesn't make sense. Uh, I didn't add earlier, this is a teenager's car, first car, so... <laughs> I hope not, but it could be short-lived, you know what I mean? So, uh, there we go, we got the final product. Car looking good, looking real good. Got the seals all put back in it and everything. So, there you guys go. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next one.